I wanted to talk about the opportunity that we have as a community. Our geospatial industry is tiny. We all know each other. And it really is, so we, we can play this outsized role to try to rise to some of these challenges of today. And, uh, and really, the opportunity is for us to understand how we can build this into an ecosystem and to a community to work together so it's not just about a five or six billion dollar addressable market, but it is much bigger than that. And what I really want us to do is understand how we can shift our industry from working on one-off projects to building data-driven, sense-making products to scale for the global market. And we can do a lot together as a, as a data provider, which we are one of them, uh, we could do more. We can help to create the, the right type of standards that make data more joinable and interoperable so it's easier to query through them. And, um, and then create that participation architecture for the model makers, for the analytics providers. And then for the companies to build products to, to really solve business value needs, to speed up the decision-making process, to avoid the loss of product, and to also come up with new products that allow for you to open up your addressable market even further. And last are partners, data providers, model makers, product developers, and partners. This is our ecosystem. Uh, but I wanted to bring it back to where we are today. We have a long way to go until this ecosystem is thriving, right? Um, and, uh, and really, um, the products that we have, we have core, four core products. They're really built for you, uh, the geospatial expert. Um, and two of them are on the imagery layer, and the other two are on the insights layer. So we have planet monitoring from uh, the doves, and we have planet, planet uh, tasking from the skysats, two imagery uh, constellations that we have. And then we have base maps as a first transformation layer of insights and planet analytic feeds. But everything that you'll hear about in this keynote, I'm going to bring up about four product managers to go through each one of these things in a bit more detail, articulating what they are like today to use new features in some cases, as well as a velocity vector direction around where we're going with each one of these products. But what you'll hear about is what, we're, what we are doing to get the data that you need in the format you need it and when you need it. Now, as we develop new technologies at Planet, we're, we have a deep technical stack inside of our organization. Um, I wanted to tell you what we think about in the product organization to make sure that we actually best serve your needs. Because we can solve a problem in the browser, at a ground station, or in the next generation of the satellite. So what's most important for us as a community is to talk to us, is to understand what your, what your problems are. And we can work together to come up with really good solutions. Will showed you this chart earlier today. It's a good framework of thinking about a variety of different elements where, where Planet, as a partner, plays with our ecosystem and community. And on the, on the imagery layer is uh, where we have the Dove data, Planet Scope data, which is our daily monitoring product. We've been imaging the whole world every week for the last four years, and the whole world every day for over two years. We have over a 1,000 images deep. And combined with the Rapid Eye archive going back to 2009, this has been upgraded to really work for machines, the planet feed. And it's our promise to you that that is backward compatible and infinitely upgradable. On the SkySats, we've worked really hard over the last year to roll out better visualization tools, tasking tools, planning tools, to allow for you to get access to, and access is a keyword, access. We have 15 of these satellites in space. We can image multiple times per day of the same location. It's a rapid revisit capability. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, to highlighting some of those things. On the insights layer, if you look under the hood, this is, this is a geospatial data processing platform at scale. Right? We take level zero data, over 10 terabytes of raw, compressed data every day, and then we process it in all the standard remote sensing imagery formats. In addition, 
to creating analysis-ready data. All that's under the hood. And then on top of that, the first thing that we did was to create the base maps. And the base maps is, while we talk about a monthly base map, it really is all the, image, all the images ever collected over that time period stitched together into one seamless cloud-free mosaic. It really is quite amazing. And then we go further. We've done feature extraction on top of those base maps in order to pull out roads and buildings. And then with the, with the planet monitoring solution, we're doing feature enhancements on top of the daily data to extract vessels. So when you put it all together, we, we really want to make sure, and, and as Sue said, it's all about frictionless delivery. And uh, this is going to be a theme of, of today and into the future, and so please talk to us. Um, we have the product lounge downstairs um, after it opens at noon, right after this keynote, around what tools you use so that you can get access to these types of products into your workflow more efficiently. So with that, uh, the first person I want to bring to the stage uh, is going to talk about our planet monitoring and our planet tasking solutions on the imagery layer. Please welcome Louis Rumenier. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Robbie. And thank you all. So at Planet, we talk a lot about satellites. A little bit too much, I worry, which makes me a little bit satellite. Makes me a little bit satellite-headed. But there is a satellite at the end of the tunnel. Because at Planet, we are so much more than satellites. By the way, there are no good satellite puns. I spent days on those. If you have any good ones, please let me know after the event. But at Planet, our focus is on the data that we pull down from those satellites, on making our core imagery product better every single year so that you derive more and more benefit without any additional effort on your side. With the fleet constantly imaging, we're always bringing down new vantage points and new data sets for you all to make more informed data-driven decisions downstream. Here's one customer example that Will mentioned of Nebraska uh, and Iowa flooding from earlier this year, one of the biggest weather disasters we had this year. Customers were able to use PlanetScope monitoring to identify potentially impacted areas for near real-time situational awareness. Then using that PlanetScope monitoring, they were able to very precisely task a SkySat for a more high-resolution look to provide additional details to downstream organizations leading the rescue efforts. Disasters like this truly showcase how important it is for us to get data in your hands as fast as possible in a format that you can use immediately. So we've heard a lot of good feedback from you all over the past few years and come away with two primary takeaways. One, imagery needs are complex. We can't get by with just a single RGB, three-band, eight-bit product anymore. You all have very specific needs for Planet's full suite of bands and products. I'll touch on those a bit later, but the second big takeaway is that we know we are not the only imagery providers out there. We know you have other friends, and we know who those friends are. And we're also friends with those friends. We know that data compatibility with those friends is very important to you. So we are always working on both the hardware and the software side to enable better imagery harmonization with those third-party sensors, all while maintaining our higher frequency and lower resolution data. In addition to that data compatibility, we're also always working on new sensors to improve our spectral diversity, again, as Will mentioned. And hence, we are happy uh, to announce in Q4 the release of our first PlanetScope 5 band product, going into an early adopter stage. Uh, obviously, get in contact with us, with us if you'd like access. And at the beginning of next year, releasing our first eight band product. With that five band product, you'll have access to PlanetScope's first red edge band, which uh, in forestry is often used to identify stress symptoms in plants at a very early stage. Also has plenty of agricultural applications to identify uh, disease, fire damage, bark beetle damage, very hot topic these days. Now pivoting over to the sky sets. So, it's, it's crazy to think that less than 10 years ago, being able to monitor a target globally 
once per month was a pretty incredible feat. I remember my time back at GUI, sitting at my desk, seeing before and after photos, thinking how crazy it was that ships moved over 30 days. <laughs> Only recently were we able to make weekly and daily revisits possible. And now, live math, it's 11.15, so 45 minutes ago, we had SkySats overhead, and we'll have SkySats overhead two hours from now. This sub-daily coverage is only possible with Planet's SkySat fleet, the largest high-res fleet in the world. We know with that ultra-high revisit, you want to see the data as fast as you possibly can. To make it actionable that day, potentially queuing up additional satellites later in the day. Hence, we are also releasing this week our first SkySat Fast Track product. Now, it might not look like much visually. This one happens to look really cool because it's super far off Nader. I always love those. But the key benefit here is that this product was released, or I'm sorry, was published less than three hours after we captured it, getting you data near real time to action that and potentially enabling tip and queue down the road. But again, access capacity and lower latency don't solve everything. We know that we need to get our imagery into a format that fulfills your product needs because your products are complex. Here's an example of a 3D model produced by our good friends over at Kairos. Savan, if you're out there, woo, thanks. We recognize that we need to get this new data into a format that enables niche complex products like this down the road. And we are constantly developing our suite of products to enable this. And finally, uh, as Will mentioned, we are now diving into the foray of 50 centimeters. We are currently lowering one of the sky sets to an altitude I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but we will, with a combination of algorithmic improvements and that lowering, be able to accomplish 50 centimeters. And one of the major benefits of having our SkySat massive fleet is that this has no impact on our coverage. We're moving some satellites around very slightly to enable our continued sub-daily coverage. And unfortunately, I'm not allowed to say too much else about this 50 centimeter project, but like Robbie mentioned, we'll be at the product lounge later today, so, and actually having beers later, if you guys wanna try and squeeze some more information out of me. Please come find me. Uh, with that, I will hand off to my team member, Ariel Rhoda, to talk about access to this data. Thanks, Louis. So, in 2014, Planet reimagined what always-on imaging could be. We built beyond the traditional Landsat, Sentinel, and MODIS missions to capture BGRN imagery at 10 times the resolution and 10 times the cadence. The result was Planet Monitoring, our subscription product which gives you always recent data to any location on the world that you care about. And now, we're bringing that same creativity to the world of high-resolution tasking. As Louis mentioned, we have 15 SkySats in orbit, with more slated to launch in 2020. Right out of the gate, that's three times as many imaging opportunities as any other high-resolution imagery provider. And what we're here to do now is put that power in your hands. We know you want to be able to task imagery on the fly. We know you want to be able to respond to real-time events in real time. And we know you want to do those things without complex purchasing flows and without humans in the loop, which is why we've spent the last year building an API and web application that will allow you to autonomously create, manage, and modify your own tasking orders. And we are excited to announce that that API is now available in beta and will be launching the tasking dashboard later this year. So let's take a sneak peek. Planet's flexible tasking customers will have access to our full suite of tasking tools. With the API and dashboard, you'll be able to create your own orders, specifying area of interest, time of interest, and custom collection parameters. As an example, an international partner of ours focused on value-added GIS services maps thousands of locations across Asia every year and they need to be able to respond to their customers' requests, their needs for imagery in real time. They work with verticals including agriculture, forestry, mining, and urban planning. With the API and dashboard, 
you'll be able to autonomously manage your full set of orders. And as collection progresses, you'll be able to follow along with that order in real time. It really is this easy. We know that you need fast, predictable, and reliable tasking. And as we wrap up the year and move into 2020, we are excited to put these tools in your hands and to continue to build out a feature set that will give you unparalleled transparency and control over the tasking process. So now that we're imaging more than 250 million square kilometers of imagery every day, how does that data make its way to you? How can we enable you to order, transform, and integrate more data faster? We are excited to announce that as part of your Planet subscription, you'll now have access to a new suite of API features and capabilities to make your lives easier. Recently released, the Orders API was designed to enable you to download and process Planet data at scale. With the Orders API, you'll have the capability of activating and downloading vast quantities of data up to 500 items at a time across a broad AOI or a deep time series of imagery. You'll be able to specify a cloud storage location of choice for easier delivery and easier integration with your workflows. And you'll have access to a new suite of raster operations so that we can take on that easy pre-processing work for you and you can be focused on deeper analysis and insights generation. We built these features so that some of our largest planet monitoring customers would be able to download and process vast amounts of data at a time. Our partner, Granular, analyzes vegetation index on planet's daily imagery to deliver insights on in-season change and in-field variability. Granular helps farmers uh, monitor crop health, detect uh, changes in crop growth, unexpected changes, so that farmers can direct their scouting efforts. Granular monitors more than 280,000 fields globally with Planet's daily imagery and downloads up to 1 million scenes a week. With the insights they're able to build on our data, they're helping farmers save up to 80% of their scouting time in the field. We are so excited to be offering these capabilities to you and to others so that you can download, transform, and integrate more data at scale. And with that, I'd like to hand things off to my colleague, Asa, to talk more about our suite of integration tools. Thanks, Ariel. Many of you have created valuable geospatial workflows. Those workflows are bringing value to your organizations. They're bringing value to your communities. They're bringing value to your missions. At Planet, we're always thinking about how we can create better satellites and new data products to bring more value to you. But sometimes it's just about bringing planet imagery into those workflows in ways that strengthen and enrich them. I'm so excited to talk about some of the plugins that we're building to strengthen your GIS workflows through planet integrations. We've already seen so many compelling use cases emerge from this fusion of GIS and planet imagery from counties that are using planet imagery alongside their local zoning maps in order to pinpoint areas of potential sustainability and land use compliance issues, to emergency management organizations. They're using planet imagery alongside their disaster-related data inside of GIS to provide situational awareness to their field crews and operations staff, and timber companies that are using planet imagery in GIS to survey hundreds of forest blocks in order to track and schedule management activities, as well as monitor those locations for potential disturbances like bark beetle infestation and fires. The first example I'd like to show is of our ArcGIS Pro add-in. We released this add-in in early July ahead of the Esri User Conference, and it had some pretty basic functionality, which was to stream and download planet base maps. We've greatly enriched those features to now include search and discovery, streaming and download of planet monitoring and archive imagery. And I'd like to show this case, this particular use case, through the eyes of a protected forest area manager in Brazil. Forest managers in Brazil are under immense pressure. Brazil lost more primary forests than any other country in the world in 2018, according to data from the World Resources Institute. According to the same study, 
Much of that forest loss occurred in and around protected areas, such as indigenous forest areas. So if we start this video, and we can see here in blue the national parks of Brazil, we can zoom into a location of recent forest loss, which are shown here with these pink alerts that are the GLAD alerts, a new real-time forest loss system from Global Forest Watch. Intersecting these management areas with these GLAD alerts is an extremely valuable workflow. It enables forest managers to pinpoint areas of potential illegal deforestation in order to bring awareness to the events. But it still doesn't let them answer some basic questions, such as, is this true deforestation? When exactly did it start? And what's driving this forest loss in my management area? Using the plugin for ArcGIS, forest managers and others can now search the planet archive and monitoring imagery in order to bring in imagery and tell a more complete story along the data points that they're bringing in to their GIS. By animating through, we can see how the forest loss started in early June and progressed to August when some of the fires broke out, as we are all aware from the news cycle this summer. These services are all coming in through our streaming services, which means that we can ask these questions and get answers immediately. The answers that we saw here will inform a totally different response to this deforestation than if this was a large industrial actor and not driven by smallholder agriculture. Moreover, ArcGIS is no longer just a desktop analyst tool. It's empowering teams of people to collaborate around geospatial data so an analyst can take this map that they've seen, they can drop a point where the illegal activity is happening, and they can immediately share this up into ArcGIS Online, where they can dispatch it to applications like the ArcGIS Collector app that allows for disconnected data editing in the field and can actually move people to uh, GPS points in their area that they care about. So this workflow, uh, which used to be a, a semi-long process, is now done uh, in a matter of minutes. The next example I'd like to show is our QGS plugin that has similar functionality and that it allows us to search through Planet Archive and monitoring imagery and download those images and stream them all within the QGS application. I'd like to show an example in Syria, which we all know has experienced a ton of turmoil in the last few years. An unfortunate consequence of that turmoil is the displacement of people and communities. So if we zoom in to an area in northern Syria, we can take a look at an internal displaced persons camp, which is sitting near a reservoir uh, and is visible on planet base maps. If we toggle between planet base maps, the December 2018 and March of 2019, we can see a rapid movement of this community westward due to a major flood in a very short period of time. An analyst at an international aid organization might want to use this data to search around it for high resolution skysat imagery so that they can get a better idea of the on the ground conditions in this camp. Using the QJS plugin, they can identify this change in their GIS and they can quickly search around it, pull in a skysat image using our streaming services where they can even do some basic contrast stretching brightness manipulation so they can bring out the features they truly care about. In this example, an analyst might want to be able to pinpoint exactly how many settlements there are in these camps, as well as identify critical points of entry so they can inform their, their routines and their logistics of getting international aid to this community. We are so excited to continue expanding these integrations working with some of our partners like Google Earth Engine and Harris to make bridges to those communities of geospatial users, as well as expanding the capabilities of our QGS and ArcGIS plugins to include some of the features that Ariel touched on, those API updates, such as direct delivery to cloud storage, continued advancements in our streaming service capabilities, such as false color and index streaming, so you can get those answers quickly, and bringing in our analytics, which Justin will mention in the next section. All of this is going to come together so you can work in the environments where you thrive and answer your questions in timely and, and informed ways. Thank you, and I'd like to welcome to the stage uh, Justin Davis. Thanks for that lovely introduction, Asa. So let's do a quick recap here. 
We heard from Louis about how we're constantly refreshing our constellation, putting new sensors into orbit to bring you best-in-class imagery. We heard from Arielle about how we're working to get that imagery to you in the formats you need and at scale. And we heard from Asa about how we're going to get that imagery into the environments you need to satisfy your workflows. And your workflows are as varied as your use cases. Some of you don't want to look at every single image we publish. Some of you are looking at much smaller areas of interest to try to find those diamonds in the rough in our imagery. And some of you might never want to look at another image again if you didn't have to. It's all about plugging you in in the place you want to be in these pathway to insights. So if you want to work with imagery, that's fantastic. We have a lot of it. If you, if you maybe don't have a remote sensing uh, degree, or maybe don't have machine learning expertise, you should still be able to get answers to your questions with Planet Data. So let's, the less you have to worry about data preparation and data transformation, the more you can bring your unique expertise and vertical knowledge to our data to get those answers. So let's talk about some of these transformations, starting with our base maps. Taking the best imagery we publish on a weekly, monthly, and quarterly basis, stitching them together, removing clouds wherever possible, and creating a smaller, more digestible asset for you to work with. And we're able to offer planet scope imagery as well as sky side imagery in our base maps as a three band visual product that's optimized to be looked at and also is really good for computer vision techniques, as well as a four band surface reflectance base map, which preserves the integrity of those pixels. So planet base maps takes that 250 million square kilometers that we publish each day and creates a smaller asset for you to work with. For those of you who want to get a little bit further away from the imagery, we are very proud to be offering Planet's analytic feeds, automatically extracting key features from our imagery as we publish it and making them available for you to query. So we've got our vessel detection based on our daily monitoring, and we've got our roads detection and building detection based on our planet-based maps. So what sort of use cases can be satisfied with these feeds? Well, let's start with roads. Now, roads can usually be a precursor to an event to come. Now, here's an example of a forest in Turkey where you can see roads being developed across several months, ultimately leading to deforestation. Now, Global Forest Watch uses road development as a signal to try to identify places that are at high risk for deforestation. And it doesn't stop with forests. In the Permian Basin, for example, as roads are developed, you can often see well pads be developed shortly thereafter. When you see roads being developed outside of cities, that can lead to new building developments, which brings us building detection. So the Human Rights Watch is able to use our building detection to identify places where villages have been demolished, like in this example in Burma, and subsequently resettled. And so building developments, building detection, can help identify places of economic expansion, and it also can help identify places that need our aid, like Asa was talking about with the internal displaced persons camp. Lastly, we've got ship detection. Now, Global Fishing Watch has been able to, to use uh, ship detection paired with other data sources like AIS to identify places of illegal fishing. We've come a long way from the days of GOI where you get you know, an update every 30 days. This is happening every day. We are extracting every ship from our daily imagery. So these are some really good examples of specific use cases in specific locales. But you might be wondering, how well would this work in my neck of the woods? Well, let's take a look at our neck of the woods. So here is where we are, in a view that you might expect to see if you open it up your phone and we're trying to get directions somewhere. And here is our base map that we talked about. So you can see how we were able to remove all the clouds, remove all the stitching between the different scenes. And here is our roads and buildings layer. So buildings in blue, roads in orange. Pretty good. But a planet, as you might have seen earlier, we work at planetary scale. We've been able to extract every single road, every single building on the Earth. So no matter how remote of a location, you're going to know where those roads and buildings are. You're going to be able to stay up to date with what's going on in the world. So as we make our way over to a city in Yemen, you can see just all of the roads and buildings on this Earth. But I wanted to point this place out, because even in cities, Sometimes the, the data could be a little bit out of date, but not with Planet. So you'll see other data sources might not have exactly what we're talking about. So we did it. We have a 
global data set of roads and buildings. And since it's based on our monthly base maps, we can refresh this every month. So what's next? We did it. We have every road and building in the world. What could possibly be next? Well, what if we could tell you where new buildings were being built? What if we could tell you where new roads were being developed? So that you could focus your resources and attention to the places that need it most, rather than looking everywhere. Well, we've been hard at work putting together a change detection feed to do just that. And we wanted to show you some preliminary results. So we ran this change detection feed across China to identify places that were being developed faster than others. And here, you're able to see it running at scale. And what's more than that, we were able to transform this data into statistical time series analysis that might be a little bit more compatible with some of the workflows that you may have. So if you want to plug it into business insights tools, that's going to be, we're, we're here for you. And here you can clearly see how Huafei is, being, is uh, developing faster than any other city in China, and definitely faster than Luxembourg City as well. So let's take a look at what this actually looks like. Here's a before and after of a region within Huafei. Think you can spot where the new buildings have been developed? It might be a little difficult, but not with our change detection feed. We're able to identify the buildings that were developed in the past year and uh, extract them, make them available to you as polygons. So zooming in a little bit closer, you can see exactly what we're talking about. This is just the beginning. We're gonna continue to extract key features from our imagery as it gets published, available for you to query. So whether you're looking for swimming pools, airplanes, well pads, if you can see it in our imagery, we should be able to detect it. And I'd love to hear more about the problems you're trying to solve, the answers, the questions you're trying to answer with Planet Data, and I'd love to talk to you about how our analytic feeds might be able to help. So definitely come visit us in the product lounge. And with that, I think I'm gonna hand it off back to Robbie. All right, thank you, Justin. Thank you, thank you. What do you guys think? Yeah? We, uh, we powered through that, actually. So uh, there's a lot of dense information in there. And you, you heard a piece of it from Will, the summary, also from me, detailed with the team. And you're going to hear from me one more time. <laughs> so uh, again, with, uh, I, I just want to recap some of the highlights that we have. We've upgraded our radiometry with our daily monitoring mission. We've upgraded these satellites to work for computers. Uh, the the four-band product, as we affectionately called Dove Classic internally, being upgraded with better radiometry, it's backwards compatible, and we're rolling out five-band and then eight-band. And this has an extensible architecture that talk to us. What other spectral bands do you care about? Because we, we might be able to actually help to solve that problem. What other types of things do you want to have autonomously extracted from that? And the imagery itself can actually play a really key role in doing that. And then Ariel was talking about uh, orders API. Um, how do we actually allow for those who want vast amounts of data to get it very, very quickly? Again, that's one API call. You can have many simultaneously. On the SkySats, this one I'm super excited about because uh, we, we have absolutely heard what the market wants. You want the data immediately. Right? And there are so many different ways that Planet can help to get the data to you immediately. And we're chipping away at each one of those things from a technical perspective in order to make it as seamless as possible so that you, you can have the collection type that you seek, whether it's a video or a stereo image, when you want it, and deliver it to you as fast as you can. So SkySat Fast Track is our first foray into an accelerated image processing um, process. And uh, we have more to come on that. Please do talk to Louis, talk to the team um, at the product lounge. And then also at, at 3 PM, we have the product team up in one of the breakout sessions uh, around what you want in order to get this data uh, to you faster. The tasking API and the tasking dashboard, this is the thing that allows for you to have a virtual joystick for these satellites, to allow for you to choose exactly the area of interest and the type of collect that you care about. We want to give the power of uh, Earth, Earth observation collection to you. Uh, then last is, is really 
very exciting. It is, uh, we're lowering this guy set to get down to 50 centimeters. Um, and there's, there, there will be a, I can't wait to get first light on that, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Asa came out and talked about our integrations. And as Sue was saying, we have to make it frictionless, make it as easy as possible to get these tools into your hands, into your workflow. And as I mentioned before, our products are really aimed at you, the geospatial expert. So ArcGIS and QGIS, uh, we're, 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 we're heading into that. What other features do you want to have through those workflows? Please let us know. And we've heard about Google Earth Engine and Harris Envy and some other suite but, uh, of tools, but please let us know. All of this is powered by our web-enabled API. So it's the same API that you could actually, if you're a developer, build your own connection point as well. But for the, the leading tools, we want to do that for you. So please come talk to us about that. And the last two, um, back to our insights layer, last two products that we have, the core products at Planet is our base maps. Uh, you can make it look really nice visually as a slippy map behind with a, with a tile server in order to have a fresh and up-to-date uh, map behind your application. But we've also been able to stitch these together and keep the analytic integrity of the product to do uh, surface reflected base maps. Uh, so uh, this is really a tool that allows for you to do some analysis and analytics on top of it. And to prove that, that's what we've done as well. We've taken that exact same product and done uh, feature extraction on top of that, roads and buildings. And then, um, and then with, uh, with, with vessels or ships littorally all over the world, we're able to extract that from our daily monitoring product. So again, these are two tools, these are two products that are built on top of these tools. And it's all about getting the, the massive amounts of data into a much easier format to use. And as that data shape, as we like to call it, gets down, then more people can use it. The more that people use it, the lower the cost per user. And the lower the cost per user, the greater the addressable market, right? And so that's why we're beginning to work on summary statistics so that we could actually get it into business intelligence tools and not just inside remote sensing uh, tools itself. So before I hand it over to Hillary, I, I, want, to, I want to thank you. Um, I'm super proud, actually, of the, not actually, I'm super proud of the Planet team. Um, the, 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 the entire engineering stack that we have, our product managers, uh, and putting together, really, our, our inaugural community. Uh, so I'm delighted that you guys are here. Please do talk with us. Uh, we want to really do the back-end data processing curation things that then superpower you. Um, and together, we can take this small industry and turn it into something that the world needs at, to make decisions at the speed of business. So thank you guys very much. Please come down to the product lounge and the product team at the breakout at 3 p.m. We will all be there for, to answer any, sort of your, any of your questions. But thank you all very much. And before we go to lunch, I'm going to bring up Hillary, our Vice President of Marketing. Thank you.